Okay, I just you're gonna get a double. You're gonna get a double. Oh my! You're gonna get a double today. That dog just tried to commit suicide on my motorcycle. You're gonna get a you're gonna get a two for one today. So this might go a little bit long, but I want to tell another story about Nicaragua. Um, Mitch was a surveyor in the army, and so before we had the base up, I helped him survey, and then he helped me put all the electrical stuff in, and. That worked out great, but once we were done with all that, we were kind of twiddling our thumbs. And so we got put to work in the supply section of, of, the, uh, of the base. And people would come, and uh, the supply sergeant was a real jerk, and he used, it, he used his position to um, get like bribes out of people. It's his job to give stuff away. And so we're sitting there, and he goes, hey, if, if anybody comes, you know, make sure they sign for whatever they get and don't give them the new, we had all these new, brand new tools still in the package. He goes, don't give them any of the new tools, give them all the old stuff. It's, our, it's used and halfway broken and stuff. So we're sitting there, we don't care, obviously. What are you gonna do, fires from the supply guard? Some guy comes up and he goes, hey, I need a, I need a chainsaw. And, I'm like, and, I, and I point, there's, there are six chainsaws brand new still in the box and I go, well, there's six of them. He goes, well, do I need to sign anything? Or, uh, I mean, we had some old chainsaws, and the guy specifically said, don't give out the new chainsaws. The soldier comes up, hey, I need a chainsaw. There's some trees in the way over here. And, and I go, well, there's six of them. And he goes, do I need to sign anything? Nope, you're good. Just bring it back when you're done. And he did. Go figure. Where was he going to take it? We were in Nicaragua. So, one day... Um, Mitch and I, we worked together often, but one day uh, I was driving the forklift. I really enjoyed driving the forklift and loading and unloading trucks. It was just kind of fun to operate that huge piece of equipment. And so I was, but I didn't have a license for it. So I was uh, unloading this truck and uh, this captain came over to me, this, this officer. He was a captain and he had a civilian guy next to him. And the civilian guy was some kind of safety management expert that, that the Army had hired. He was an American guy to come and evaluate the safety. So they come up to me and they're, they're like, hey, excuse me, do you have a license to operate this piece of equipment? And I didn't. Um, I just kind of had I have a knack for operating those sorts of things and I enjoy it. So they stuck me in there. And uh, I said, no, I don't, I don't have a license, but I'm training to pass the test. And my trainer is, you know, I told him the guy, the really stupid guy that ordered me to carry the stick around. He was training me to operate the forklift, <clears throat> which was true. But I, the whole part about me training to take the test, that wasn't true. I just made that up so they would leave me alone and I could continue working. He goes, well, and they talk, they whisper back and forth for a second. And he goes, well, if you don't have, if you don't have a license, then we can't allow you to continue operating this this vehicle and I said well this truck needs to be unloaded so what do you want me to do and they whisper back and forth a little bit and they say sorry we can't you just got to stop working so I jumped out of the I jumped out of the forklift and walked back to my tent this was like 10 in the morning okay the work day had, was basically just starting <clears throat> 9 or 10 in the morning right so I jump out of the forklift I walk back to my tent I change out of my uniform I put shorts on and I put this Hawaiian t-shirt on and, and I just kind of, we had this makeshift uh, shady area. We had taken a big tarp and strung it up between a couple of the tents. And uh, I was just hanging out in the shade. And after, after a while, here comes Mitch. And Mitch is like, what are you doing? And I said, well, these, this, this civilian and this officer, they told me to stop working. Which really, it meant stop driving the forklift and go do something else. But when they told me to stop working, I was like, you got it, buddy. I went back and changed into my civilian clothes and was just going to chill for the rest of the day until somebody else came along and yelled at me to get back to work and then I was going to go back to work. And Mitch goes, Mitch goes, the same guys came and talked to me and, and I was like, well, what were you doing? And he said, I, was, I had a pickup truck and I was loading a rake in the back of the pickup truck. And I said, how was that dangerous? And he goes, well, they told me that that, you, that you're not allowed to work alone and because I was out there by myself that if I got hurt no one would be there to help me and he but he goes but sir I'm just putting some rakes 
in the back of this truck. They're like, well, we can't allow you to continue doing that. And so he was on, he thought, ex we, th we thought exactly the same thing. As soon as they told him that, he came straight back to the tent, changed into his civilian clothes, and when we, you know, we just kind of laid there catching some sun and uh, reading a book or whatever. And, and a little while later, this same officer and civilian guy, they came walking past our tent. And both of us were like, oh no, oh no, this is gonna be bad. And uh, rather than like act guilty or anything, I always just try to like play it cool. And so these guys walked by and I was like, hey, what's up, sir? I waved to them and they, they said, hey guys, how you doing? We said, good, and they just walked away. So that was like, that's like the, a lesson, big lesson you can learn from being in the army. Uh, nobody, it doesn't really seem like anybody expects very much out of it. Like it's so easy just to just sit around and there we were trying to work hard, trying to accomplish something, trying to do what we were there to do, and we got in trouble for it. And then we go and we sit down and we don't work for the rest of the day. And uh, and we got and that's and that's when uh, that's when those guys walked by and they were like, hey guys, what's up? And they were all friendly with us. It was just it just is uh, some of the things that happen in the army are just so baffling. Anyways, this was probably longer than I expected, but I, um, I have a lot more stories. You'll probably hear more from, from Nicaragua. That's a true story Sunday, signing off.